will find little sign of life in the Norwegian mountains. It stays dark for months, and temperatures plummet to minus 35 degrees. Landscapes like this want to hurt you. They want to kill you. Unless, of course, you're trained to thrive. The Royal Marine Commandos are the UK's Arctic warfare experts. They've spent over half a century honing their unique skill set hundreds of miles inside the Arctic Circle. A deployment to Norway is often seen as a rite of passage in the Marines. The making of a bootneck. I spent four and a half years as a Marine and never got a chance to visit Norway. But I'm about to spend a week here to see what all the buzz is about. Let's get stuck in. The Marines come to Northern Norway to take part in exercise Cold Response, an annual exercise involving 35,000 troops from 28 countries designed to test NATO's ability to protect Norway in case war breaks out in the region. But before the Royal Marines take part in the joint exercise, they need to learn the basics, and that responsibility falls on the shoulders of the mountain leaders. The Royal Marines are set apart from the, the rest of the British military, mainly by the fact that we do Arctic training. This is a huge beast and it consumes quite a, a large portion of our, our training year. Even just to beat up to you know, the mountain training in, in Scotland uh, and then a three month deployment to, to Norway. And it's the fact that it is just so difficult to, to operate out here. It sets you up for, for operations all, all over the world in the harshest of of conditions. These guys are a specialist branch of the Royal Marines, a cut above the rest when it comes to soldiering in extreme environments. We made it out here in time to see the Royal Marines consolidate their skills through live fire exercises, involving some big weapons. Soldiering is tricky business. You've got the enemy to worry about, your weapon system, fire support, malleting a position. But in the cold, I imagine it's a different ball game. Well, the coach, what's going to happen is Charlie Company will leave their half of position and then we'll move around on the Viking ski all in. They'll get to a drop off point. Once they're at that drop off point, they'll convert to their skis. From there, they'll cross an RV point into snowshoe. So effectively, which is that LLD, that line of departure. From there, they'll move and they're heading towards the tank hole. The Royal Marines are also the UK's amphibious specialists. This means that most of the time, wherever you find the Marines, you'll find boats. We've been invited to watch 539 Assault Squadron conduct some of their amphibious drills, and we get to have a ride on one of those. We're about to slip on one of the orcs. We're gonna be following on as they practice their break contact drills out in the open ocean. As we're sat here where the enemy craft now, you've got the, uh, the boat group coming in, the fire support vessels. Uh, closest to the threat on the left hand side with the big uh, the big guns on on the 0.5s they'll see the enemy threat which is us and they'll um, they'll sweep off away from the target with the guns pointing to the rear engaging the target with the troop carrying vessels furthest away from the threat
temperature and the weather, obviously the biggest challenge out here, uh, especially out on the water, because we've got the wind chill, as well as obviously the, the water that freezes instantly as well. And if we're heading off down, as it, down the fjord of Burke Group at like 30 knots into a 30 knot wind, it can quickly become down to minus 60 plus. The role has carried through since the Second World War, where groups of Royal Marines ran ashore 800 kilometers south from here at Namsus. Just as it was during the First World War, Norway was neutral, hoping to stay out of what was rapidly evolving in mainland Europe. Nazi Germany had other plans. In 1940, they launched attacks from the air, sea and land. Norway's military was underfunded and weak because of its pacifist policies. They needed help from their allies and fast. The Royal Marine Commandos were sent in to recapture key ports around Norway and prevent a German advance north. Prowling undetected through the bleak North Sea, ships of the Royal Navy steam silently toward two Nazi-held Norwegian islands. Aboard are commandos, the hard-hitting British Blitz troops. All night, hand grenade fuses are set, for dawn will bring lightning landing thrusts at strategic Nazi bases. Important in all of this was the port at Namsus. The Allies saw the port as a good spot to land troops and set up logistics, crucial to the successful defeat of the Nazis in Norway. Under the command of Captain Eds, a small team of Royal Marines arrived ashore, eventually leading to the successful occupation of Namsus and the seizure of bigger ports along the coast. And so, the bond between the Royal Marines and the Norwegians was forged. Putnegs do see Norway as a rite of passage. Uh, the training that we do here is some of the hardest across the, the whole of the world. And at the moment, you know, we've maybe got between 50 and 70% of the whole force trained in, in Arctic warfare. So for those that haven't done it, they, they do feel like they're, they're missing out. There's clearly a rich history, but what is it about Norway which makes Royal Marines tick today? Every year, the Royal Marines visit their Norwegian neighbours, maintaining their cold weather skills whilst demonstrating their commitment to one of their closest NATO allies. But I've learnt that the going isn't easy. Of course, Norway isn't the only place in the Arctic that British forces will deploy. There are other places just as hostile and just as significant. 